It's another edition of Trudell's Weekly Take presented by Health Alliance and with Jean-Guy Trudell. I'm Andrew Mossbrooks. We have two games against the Macon Mayhem coming up. It's going to close out a five-game homestand. Uh, Coach, let's go back to last weekend, though. Three games in four days, you get four out of a possible six points. And to do that against such a good team and a playoff team like Pensacola, I think you got to feel happy about that. Yeah, and we, we spoke about it. I don't really care about the points. I care about the way we played, and I was really happy with, I think we played like seven really good periods, and we played one good period and one very average period. So for a weekend against a good hockey team like Pensacola, it's uh, as a coach, it's really satisfying, and especially what we've been working on lately, the, the few things we've changed to play a higher pace type of game that we want to play, uh, the guys are really working at it and actually buying into it, and uh, I think we're playing faster hockey more puck possession hockey but uh, I always say even you don't if you don't have the fastest skater if you play a fast game you look like a fast hockey team and I think I we played that way and it was really really nice to see the boys kind of going at it and uh, it's not easy playing three games in four nights and I, I thought in the third period of the last game we still had great legs and we were still flying out there so for a coach it's uh you can't ask for more uh, we know Pensacola is a very good hockey team and to get four points we'll we'll take it for sure when you bring up Sunday and how in the third period the guys were still having their skating legs do you think that had a lot to do with having Saturday off I mean how big of a help was it it was it was certainly a a big help and uh, having no ice here we kind of completely stayed off the ice just kind of a recovery day on Saturday so the boys were uh, ready and we made it a a playoff weekend so you know no matter what we we won two skill competition uh, so I really don't look at those points I just look at the way we were playing, it was it was fun. It was fun to watch. We had the puck a lot. We were flying our four check, our rotations. Uh, so uh, as a coach, you just uh, I told the boys we were trending up. You know, you just want to keep getting better every single day. And I saw that this week. So really satisfied with the players. You know, shootouts. You'll see them in all star games. You'll see them, and as you called the skills competition. If the SPHL had an all star game and there was a shootout, it would be hard to not go with Ryland Pashovitz and gold. Man, did he play great! Uh, yeah, that, uh, you know, it's very calm. He doesn't move much. And as a coach, it's it's nice. You you want to see that in your goaltender, a guy that goes in there. And uh, he, he talked about it. He, he likes the pressure. And that's what you want to see as a player. And uh, he made me calm out there, especially after his big save, the Hashik. I call it the Hashik save there, the, the first shootout. I was like, all right, the kid the kid's pretty calm and collective in there. So we're we're good to go. And uh, and even uh, the like I, we, we talk, spoke about, I wasn't even – uh, nervous of winning and losing because skill competition is a skill competition. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it is what it is, uh, but the way we played those games, I was happy. So I had a good feeling inside. No matter if we would have won or lost a shootout, it was still a great feeling after both games. Um, I'm going to ask you about it. I don't want to really bring any more attention to him, but uh, you know, Jesse Kessler, uh, the last shooter for Pensacola on Sunday, overskated the puck. I heard, and I don't know if this is true, so you'll confirm it for me, that a bunch of the guys on the bench, you, Escroba, Cam, our equipment manager, Max, our athletic trainer, that everybody turned away. Nobody wanted to see the last shot. Yeah, we. Uh, <laughs> I actually turned away and spoke to Scrobes, and uh, I was like, "Just one time, a big guy." And uh, he uh, and it was like a second later, everybody was cheering. So I was like, "Man, did that guy skate that fast to the net?" Uh, but no, he he dropped the puck, and I I, f- I feel for the for the kid because I you know I've been in many shootouts in my life, and uh, I mean they are kind of nerve wracking. You're I mean everybody's yeah. you know sometimes you have five six thousand in the building looking at one person going against one person, so. It, it's kind of nerve wracking. It's gonna happen. It's uh, you saw it in the NHL. It happens. A puck. It's always bad ice at the end. You know, at the end of the game. So it's gonna happen. And uh, it, it did. Fortunately for us. Unfortunately for for Mr. Kessler there. But uh, we'll take the win. I can't speak for this league, but you know, you talk about bad ice. The other thing that they and they stopped doing it even in the NHLs. They used to have the Zamboni come on. They would do a little cut down the ice. Yeah, it just took too long. And I, I agree. I wouldn't want that back. It takes too long. And uh, I like it that way. You just, you know, I mean, bad ice or no bad ice you uh it, it's the same for everybody else so uh unfortunately it bounced over i didn't see it but it bounced over a stick i guess and uh we'll take the win but uh like i said the uh, skill competition aside i was really really satisfied with the way we played well it was nice to have rylan pashevich show that he can come in and play well eric levine obviously has been the de facto number one this whole season and hey you know, he had a hiccup in a weekend. It happens, especially to goaltenders with the way and the amount of time that they play. Um, but I think you're a believer in, you know, get a guy back on his high horse. And so it looks like 
you are going to start Levine this Friday. Yeah, he's going to be playing Friday, and uh, I I don't think he, the first game we don't like to give first shot goals, and he gave a few of them. Uh, but I rewatched uh, three goals he gave in the second game he played, and he really didn't have a chance on those. Go- no, so I mean the hiccup was mostly for one game, and it wasn't really. It was still good shots. We just I, I think we came to expect with Eric to stop everything. So uh, when he gets scored. Uh, first shots, we get a little disappointed. And for me, it was more his rebound control in the first period. He didn't look like he was seeing the puck so much. Uh, so I had to make a decision. I hate to make that decision, uh, but I think Eric understood. I spoke to him, and we understand. And and Eric is still our number one, and he's still going to bring us to the promised land. Uh, I, I think he played really well the second game. He made some big saves. So uh, it's Pensacola. They have shooters. I mean, uh, you know, when a shooter shoots, it usually goes in. So unfortunately for goalies, that's the way it is. But we're, we're not nervous at all. Uh, Eric just had two or three great days of practice this week so he's ready to go tomorrow when you go in the riverman locker room here in in carver arena the first thing you see as you walk in is the standings and we're first and the team that we're playing is 10th and that's the making mayhem you know i know i've talked to you before about that and you don't want to really read into it but i mean i i imagine part of what makes it challenging like we've said with quad city when you play a team so much well it's also sometimes hard if the first thing a guy is seeing is oh we're playing that team how do you get these guys fired up and make sure that everybody knows hey treat every game like it's a playoff game yeah we had a meeting yesterday about that and for as a coach you try to find all kinds of different ways and yesterday our meeting was about our schedule until our next break our schedule the teams we're playing and what do we want to accomplish with what we have before our next break. We have another break of four days that we give the players in, uh, in about a month. So uh, we spoke about that. And we, for us, it's not who we play. It's about we, we, we talked about trending up and we talked about doing the right things and every single day. And we want to be so consistent on our effort period after period, shift after shift, that in the playoff is just going to be natural to just play the same way, play hard. And that's what we're trying to get to. So for us, playing Macon or playing, you know, Fayetteville or Pensacola, it really doesn't change our mentality. We did a playoff weekend against Pensacola because we played three games. Right. And it's two out of threes in the playoffs for us. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's why we kind of, try, you know, we, we treat it as a playoff weekend. But it's not because it was Pensacola. It's mostly because of the schedule that we have. And we're going to do the same thing with Evansville when they come in. We kind of have that same format. So, uh I, I understand what you're saying, um, but we had a, I thought we had a great meeting about talking our expectation of becoming so, I mean, dialed in on our effort daily, practice, games. We spoke about how many practice we have left till our break and, you know, wh- how important these reps are in games and in practice. So I don't think it's going to really matter. You know, of course, as a coach, you're always nervous about every single situation. Uh, but I think we have really, really good professionals in the locker room that I, uh, I honestly, I trust my team. I trust that they're going to come out with a big effort. They're excited. They love playing in games. Uh, we have that kind of mentality that you know we work so hard in practice that games are going to be easier and that's kind of what we're going to go with uh, this weekend how nice is it to have that communication because it's obviously key and on the ice we talk about on the ice so much though so you mentioned there's a meeting nobody's in skates for that meeting everybody's sitting in that locker room it's just dialogue and how important is that do you think to a team to have that locker room talk about just being ready setting expectations setting benchmarks and obviously having the success the Rivermen have I'm a big believer that coaches players were creatures of habits you like to know what's coming up. You like to know, you know, you have a, your daily routine. You have, you, you want a routine in everything you do. So just having those meetings of our expectations, our schedule, our practice schedule, exactly where you have to be at what time and do what, I think it makes it a lot easier on everybody else. So uh, we, we do that here a lot. And I, I'm a big believer in roundtable meetings. I believe that um, we are all part of this company. Uh, yeah. And and for me, uh, my title is the coach, uh, but To me, players are more important than the coach. So we're all in this together. So if we don't have communication, we have nothing. So we talked about everything as a group. And and a lot of times they decide on certain situations what they want to do with that situation. And that gives them, I mean, uh, a little bit more value in the company. And then they, you know, they kind of put expectation on themselves. They kind of put that pressure on themselves to, you know, we decided on this and let's do this. So it's uh, that's the way I've been doing things. I think the communication is is something with the new generation that you have to have, you know, where 
we're, we're a generation that they want to know the why, the where, and and the what. So we we try to you know do it this way. And and to me, I look at these guys as my family. They're I mean, it's uh, some are you know too old to be my kids, but I, I love them to death. So that uh, I like to do things together, and we're going to win together or lose together, whatever it is. Uh, but I'm never going to change my way of coaching. Oh, well, we've got two games this weekend against the Macon Mayhem. Friday and Saturday, they're both at seven fifteen. Saturday is Marvel night. Coach, you know anything about these Marvel superheroes? Um, yes. I, uh, when I get a chance, I watch them. Um, I, I think it's going to be pretty cool. It's a, it's, I, I saw all the jerseys. Are, they're really cool. And uh, I mean, it's Marvel. I mean, yeah. it's one of the biggest things in America right now when you go to movie theaters. When you go anywhere, you just hear about them. So um, I've had a chance to you know watch Iron Man and a bunch of them. So a lot of fun, excited about it. Uh, but you know, as a coach and player for us, we're looking at Friday's first period and the warm up and everything else. So uh, the jerseys are going to be on. But for us, it's going to be about getting the two points. We do have to bring it up, though. The Rivermen are going to be wearing six unique jerseys on Saturday. So I'm Iron Man, as Coach mentioned, but the Incredible Hulk, Thor, Captain America, and many others. And it's a post-game jersey auction. Again, Saturday at 7.15, as Coach Trudell mentioned, Friday as well. 7.15, the Make and Mayhem are the opponent for both nights. You can call 309-676-1040 to get your tickets. For now, that's going to do it for this edition of Trudell's Weekly Take. Coach Trudell, hey, enjoy the uh, the Marvel night. Thanks a lot, Mossy. Appreciate it, buddy.